get started. Uh, today's pre presentation consists of po four parts. The first, uh, the overview of ZTE's part solution. The, uh, in, in this part, we will talk about uh, the lim limitation of the original path solution, and the use case of ZTE's pl path platform. And uh, we will talk a little more about the two components uh, which have been reflected based on VPP. And the second, second part is the, the detailed information that is uh, for VPP-based fast MQ architecture. The third part, detailed information for N NOF service, net output forwarding as a service, uh, the boundary of the path cloud. At last, uh, a little op optimization for VPP. And let's get started the first part, the overview of ZTE paths. Oh, okay. let, let me hold you. Wait a moment. Should we open up on our chair? I'm sorry, it works. It seems good. And <coughs> let's get started. Okay, let's get started. The first part, the over overview of ZTE's path solution. And first, it works as a public cloud, as a cloud service provider. It provides the path service to government, company, and person. The second, the path platform supports third-party service aggregation, supports the application, application stores, gathering developers, the third-party service providers and the users, and finally, become the ecological chain controller of the compu cloud computer. And it also played as the telecom providers or IT vendors, as, a, as the operator of paths can make its core ability more open, promote the sales and development of main business. And then second, for the private cloud or IT cloud, as the telecom providers, governments, banks, big com companies, and other customers build a private pass cloud pl pl platform. And it also builds unified pl platform for application development developing and uh, operating to achieve the integration and uh, mid middleware, support automatic development and transmutation of IT apps. The third part is for the 
NFV with the help with the help of automatic arrangement and deployment. The telecom providers can build NFV much easier. It, help, it helps the telecom provider realize the transformation of tele, tele, of telecommunication network architecture from special equipment to uh, cloud or general equipment. The next is the next is the features of DD Pass platform. The first, all, all the applications All the service is uh, packaged as a container image and it's run in Docker and deployment in VM or Ironic. The second, the ZT Pass platform implements the service discovery mechanism. And third, it also supports the ICT applica applications. The last, it, is, it also supports the multi tenant, multi networking plans. For example, the control plan. Data path plan, and uh, also support the API plan. Okay, let's get started. Uh, let's have a look at the packet flow inside, outside the path cloud. I'm sorry. <clears throat> Let's have a look at this. Is the logic diagram for the ZTE's pass platform? Uh, in the middle, this is the first message queue. It is based on the VPP, and the bottom is the NOF service. It also based on VPP. And first, if a Packet from the outside of the path cloud. It first through the VPP based NOF service, and then it will uh, through transform to other Microsoft containers or Docker. All the traffic it is through the VPP based message queues. After the of the process in the microservice, finally the packet will, will be transferred out, transfer out to the cloud and through the web service. Let's, let's have a familiar look at the VPP-based fast MQ architecture. 
is based on VPP. First, let's talk about the publish and subscribe pattern. First, in the past cloud, why, when the discovery mechanism should be used in the past platform? Uh, let's, get, let's talk about it. First, all the microservices are deployed dynamically, and uh, meantime, with the need of expansion and uh, sharing, the service instance will be changing dynamically, so the topology of the network will, will change too. As the reason just talking about, past platform need a uni, unified resolve solution. It called the publish and subscribe. But the traditional pu publish subscribe pattern is shown in the picture. Here, this is the publisher, and and the three is the subscribe. They commute with each other based on the sub subject. Here, the messages come through to the this subscribe or this one or this one. The the publisher. Publish the messages into classes without knowledge of, of the subscribers. Similarly, the su subscribers express interest in the classes also with, without knowledge of the publisher. So, the publish and subscribe is a spelling of the message queue paradigm, and it's typically one part of a large message-oriented middleware system. Most messaging systems support both the publish and the subscribe message queue. For, for example, we have the radius. It's an open source implementation. It was it is usually used as a in-memory NoSQL database, and it, it is networked in-memory and stored keys with optional durability. We also have another open source implementation, for example, the RabbitMQ. RabbitMQ is also an open source message bro broker software. It, in, it is implemented the advanced mesh queue protocol AMQP. And then we also have a zero MQ. Zero MQ is also an open source implementation. It's a, a synchronous messaging library is uh, a little different with the uh, RabbitMQ. But all the implement implementation of the software has a weak point. It, they're all based on the Linux socket. So the performance of all the implementations, radius RabbitMQ, zero MQ, might be poor. Uh, didn't cover the city application requirements. For this kind of implementations, so uh, let's look at the, sorry. Let's look clear at the 
containers, uh, the application in containers, the communication. Uh, for example, the containers in the, in, in the same host, in host one, the containers one and the container two, they, they each other want to communicate with each other. The first, they will use, they invoke the MQ live and to send the message to container two. It finally uses the Linux implementation. It means that if, if the application in container one want to communicate with application in container two, uh, there might be the switch between the user space and to kernel space, and uh, there they will switch to from the kernel space to user, user space again. And similarly, for the container in host one and host two, they, they will also switch from the user space and to the kernel space. So the performance for the communication between containers based on the Linux socket, the performance might be poor. It can't cover the requirement for CT in, uh, requirements. So we decided to reform the MQlib based on VPP, not based on the Linux socket. Uh, here, uh, here is an example. There are four ports, port one, port two, and port three. Also, we have a port base. In the port base, uh, we have a HM node. Uh, it means the health monitor. It, it, uh, this node will determine, monitor all the containers in port one, port two, and port three based on the heartbeat technique. Uh, uh, for example, uh, uh, for this port, they have different IP address, dot one, dot two, and dot three. Uh, for example, if the container three want to uh, get a message, uh, some kind of message, first, he must bind the session, uh, for example, session one. Uh, in the other hand, it means the C3 is a subscriber. And this is a database. If the C3 uh, subscribe his information in the database, uh, there was a record, session one, and there is IP address dot two and the port. Uh, it's an Air4 port. Uh, UDP port. And the next, the C6, uh, container six also want to receive messages. He, need, he also needed to subscribe to bind the session one. And also we have uh, another record in the database, session one, and the IP address is dot three, and the port is the air for UDP port. And the next, the C1, container one, want to send a message, he must publish the session. And in the meantime, in the database, he will go to this session based on the keyword session one. He will find two records, and he will choose uh, one destination to send this message. For example, session one, uh, zero point three, and the error port is the port two. It means that this message will be sent to the Container C six, yes, and it all includes the messages and the data. And in this port, just mention we have a HM node. It it keep monitoring the uh, link between all the containers. If if the link is broken down, for example. Uh, for the link to C6, it's broken down. And the HM mode will update the records in the database. For this record will be deleted. It means that uh, for this message, we only have one record, and the information will be updated to the C1, the publisher, and it will change the destination 
of this message. It will, uh, the message will be sent to the container three because the formulary, the destination C6, the link is broken down. All the communications between the C1, C3, or C1, C6, uh, they all have a message lib, we just uh, mentioned uh, before. The send or receive messages based on the MQ lib. In the native pass up, uh, implementation, the MQ lib is based on Linux socket. In ZTE solution, it's based on the VPP. Uh, this is the detail of our uh, implementation. It's, uh, the MQlib is based on the RTE ring. Let's have a look. Uh, it's based on a huge, huge page shared memory. We have the a DBDK must container. It will allocate the ring for all the containers in this host. And we all have the DBDK slave container. In the slave node, we all have the ring IO node. It will reopen, reopen the memories for the ring IO, for the ring. We also have the MQ node. It will do some logic process, and uh, also it supplies the uh, MQlib for the applications in the container, uh, just like the uh, send or receive messages status. For the for the content communication between two hosts, uh, we based the always switch. It's uh, also the native always. It also the user space and open with switch and uh, DVDK. So for the communication between, for example, this container from the, this app, he sent a message based on evoke the M MQlib and based on the ring and uh, finally it will go through the open with switch, open with switch DVDK and then it will be sent to the destination container. All the packets, the transmitted in the user space uh, didn't, uh, have, uh, didn't switch from the user space to Linux, Linux uh, user space, uh, kernel space. Here we have the performance data for the original Linux socket and uh, DBDK, uh, DBDK VPV based solution for the 128 bytes, the Linux socket, the performance is poor. But uh, for VPV base, it's almost uh, four, four gig. And the, all the data is test under the 10 gig adapter. And uh, the CPU is, uh, uh, wait a moment. And the CPU is the Intel E5 to, to 399. And the frequency is 2.3 gigahertz. The adapter is 10 gig. And let's look at the data. For the 212 bytes for the VPP solution, we all clear out the 10 gigabytes. PPS and uh, for 1024 bytes is uh, is 10 gig. So the performance based on VPP is uh, much better. Commun uh, for okay, we also have another BP, and uh, we just uh, the. 
our, our solution for fast MQ we just mentioned is that based on the ring I.O. And we also have another BP is based on the word I.O. and we host pairs. The diagram is like this. For the container, we have the we host the user here. And for the another container, we are using the vertical user. It's a pair. The messages and the data from the container and or to this, this container uh, is already in the user space. Not they didn't switch from the user space to kernel space. It's similar like the ring I/O solution. Okay, the third part, VPP based NOF service. NOF means that networking output forwarding service. NOF is a boundary of the past uh, cloud. Uh, for the packet, when, if the packet will go into the past cloud or go out from the past cloud, the packet will first through the NOF. Uh, the requirements for the NOF are the service. First, uh, it uh, must run in uh, Docker uh, or in the container. And second, uh, the NOF must classify the packets. It, det 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 determines the packet will go to which microservice node to, to be processed. And third, it needs the high performance and uh, throughput. The, the fourth, it also needs the security. Last, is, um, uh, because the packet is from the outside of the uh, past cloud, it needed the it, it needed the NAT. Also, it needed the load balance. Uh, in the VPP uh, native solution, some implement has such as the IPsec, NAT, and ARB. Uh, in ZTE solution, we have implemented for the packet classifier and the firewall. Here is an example. Uh, this is the past cloud. Uh, this is uh, the red one is the NOF node. Uh, it's the also based, uh, based on the VPP. There have a lot of nodes to classify the packet and uh, do some, for example, uh, the packet come into from the, is a zero. Here we have some microservices. In this node, NOF, we have this node, TBTK IO uh, is just a machine like the message queue IO. Uh, for this part, uh, NET, LB, and IP4 is the VPP solution for, for this node. Flow classify and uh, Firewall, message queue. They are all uh, implemented by the VPP. If a packet goes into the NOF node, firstly, it will be processed by this node, flow classify. This node will determine the packet go to which node. Example, for example, the net node or the IP4 node. And then they go to the pass MQ. Uh, just ma mentioned just before, it's based on the VPP. And the packet will be sent to the uh, any kinds of the microservice in another container. Here's another example for SFC. This is also the NOF node. We have the classified node. It might be in a container. Another node for net. Another node for firewall. And uh, another for LB.
all of the services or the container might be in different node, computer node. So the communication between this node will, will transmit uh, the packet between all the containers were communicate transmitted between uh, through the OSDBDK VPP switch. First, the packet comes into the classified node. The classified node will uh, determine which uh, the packet will go to which microservice node, and it it encoupled with the NSH header as a service chain. And if the packet finally persists, and it will go through the pass MQ and uh, go out. And the last part, we have some optimizations for the VPP. The first one is a no up. Is a native VPP uh, implementation. If the packet uh, is de decided to uh, put out, and uh, the finally process is in the IP4 up node. In this node, they will uh, look up the up tables based on the destination IP to get the destination MAC address. But unfortunately, if the MAC address cannot be found uh, in the native uh, solution, the packet will be dropped. But in some use case, uh, this action is unacceptable, especially in the uh, CT use case. So we did some uh, optimization. For example, just the, up, the MAC address cannot be found. the packet will be sent to the main thread in the VPP. In this node, main control process. In this, in this node, uh, it will store the cache index for the packet, and then they will construct a up request based on the, just the up look missed destination IP address, and then send out the up request through the interface output. And if we have the up reply received, For this, for this node, IP4 up, and then we will look through all the cache packets and then determine which packet can be sent out. And then we also have another mechanism, a timer process, uh, because we, we usually can't have the up reply in, in time. So we have a time process. It's, it's a, We'll scan all the cached packet in, in a certain time to uh, construct an uh, up request and uh, send out the up request to try to get the up reply. And then if the up reply was got, and the cached packet will be sent out. This is the first optimization. And the second, so the rec recombination. Uh, in our use case, uh, we all uh, we usually had a very large packet uh, for air for uh, had, which had air for invention. It will be split for many pieces. Usually for the first piece, we can have the IP head and the UDP information. But uh, for the this is the first piece, and for the next, we just have the IP information no UDP information. So that's the problem. Because in the, in, in the past platform, the packet, all the packet transmitted based on the L2 information, L3 information, and also included the L4 information. 
uh, in this situation, these two pieces didn't have the error for information. So for this, for these two packets, they can't be transmitted correctly. So, so we have uh, optimization. For the first piece packet we, which we received, we are uh, hash, uh, based on the IP, uh, based on the error 2 information, IP, error 3 information, and uh, error 4 UDP information, we got a hash value. And then for the next piece of the packet, we also use the hash values to send out this packet. For this optimization, we didn't combine all the split packets together. We just based on the first piece of the packet for the IP UDP air for information to get a hash value. And the value is used to send the, the other piece, pieces of the packet. It's a, so we call, call it a pseudo recombination. Okay. That's uh, it's uh, not a real recombination. That's two. That's two optim optimization for the VPP. We just uh, uh, we just done. Okay. Okay. Um, let's go to the summary. And just to finish, uh, let's get a summary. Why, why, or why did the ZT use uh, select the VPP DBDK? Is that the VPP and the DBDK is a fantastic development platform? And the second, uh, for the implementation of VPP, the graph node and the plugin mechanism provide a great flexibility of different network applications. It means that it, it is easier for the developers to, to develop a new function, functionality. And the third, the new capabilities can be implemented to rearrange network functionalities in data center, in the data center. Okay, that's all, thank you.